Even though the symptom that you feel can feel like my heart is racing, it makes me anxious, I'm getting lightheaded, we have to step back and think about what is that heart trying to do? As you know, in POTS, it's postural orthostatic tachycardia. And that part's pretty important because it means that there's a difference between what's happening when you're laying down and when you're upright. So what is going on? When you're upright, we have to think about that as like, it is a it is unique challenge to the body to be able to stand up and to be able to still deliver blood flow. So imagine you've got like, you're in like a, a skyscraper, tall building, you live on the penthouse, super sweet, great windows, nice view, it's beautiful. In order to get up there, to be able to have anything go to the penthouse, we need to be able to use the elevator. And that elevator requires energy, or we can think about it like a motor, to be able to push those people up toward the penthouse, right? So you can think about people that live on the ground floor, that doesn't require much energy from the elevator system at all. That's pretty easy, they don't have to run. So there's less energy, you don't have to have any of the machinery, any of the control systems, none of the people sitting like in the room with a lot of little computers making sure everything's okay, none of that. But if you're going up to the penthouse, now we have to involve some machinery. We gotta know that there's someone in the elevator, we've gotta know where they're trying to go, and we've gotta know how much force we need to be able to push that elevator up to the top floor. And that's kind of how it is when we think about delivering blood flow to the brain when we're standing up. You see where I'm going with this. So when we move from a laying down position to an upright position, there's going to be a shift where those elevators or the blood flow is trying to drop down against gravity. That's just the way gravity seems to work. But if we want to resist that, we've got to activate the machinery, which means we got to know that we need to change it. And then we have to match the amount of energy from that machine to be able to adequately get the elevator up so we don't shoot it through the roof, but we also don't end up on the third floor instead of the 50th floor. And so that takes a little bit of nuance. It takes control systems. And that's really where the science comes in because we have different sensors or nerve receptors that help us to understand, hey, number one, we're moving. Number two, it feels like we're starting to get a little bit of drop in the pressure up in our neck, in our heart, in our lungs, and that may be problematic for getting it to our brain. Let's kick on the elevators, let's kick on the heart, let's kick on the blood vessels and see if we can push more blood up. And hopefully that makes sense. But the issue can be that even though we might know we're standing up intuitively, the reflexes or the sensors that are in charge of closing that circuit and making that blood flow arrive perfectly may be too slow to respond. Maybe they are not responsive in general, like they're, they're not sensitive enough, or it might be that some portion of that system is too sensitive and it gives us an overshoot error. And so the main areas that we think about when that happens are particularly in what are called baroreceptors. These are pressure receptors. Those pressure receptors are inside of the blood vessels in a couple key places. The big ones are areas in the neck, areas in the heart, and areas in the lungs that help us to keep that pressure stable. In addition to that, we also have pressures that line the entire endothelial system within our blood vessels, which is pretty cool. Endothelial just means like the inside of the tube. So every heartbeat, that tube, the, the arteries, the tube, can respond to changes in blood flow. So if we're running and our blood pressure goes high, it might, it might knock that blood pressure down a little bit so we don't shoot through the roof, right? If we're just relaxing and we're upright and maybe we're a little tired, it might drop down a little bit and we need to stimulate, to constrict, to keep the blood flow high enough so that the levels don't drop too low. And that's kind of like a very simple concept, but it is one that is not well paid attention to. A lot of people will talk about, hey, I went into the cardiologist, I went to the neurologist, and we did uh, like a makeshift tilt test, whatever that might mean. Maybe they lay down, stand up, maybe they sit, stand up, maybe they just like eyeball them, maybe we even do a full tilt test. But very infrequently are people getting tests where we're actually looking at the blood flow in the brain. And then even less frequently than that, are we boiling down to see why are those changes happening? Is it in the baroreceptor system? Is, it, is there something that's getting blocked in the arterial system going up? 
could be a compression on one of the arteries in the neck that just is preventing blood flow in certain positions. That happens. It could also mean that some people have a hard time draining the blood flow out of their head. Kind of a similar thing, but a little bit different. And if that's true, then we get a whole different mix up because your brain is actually under more pressure. So it has to dilute or, or decrease the amount of blood flow that's being input into the system. Lots of different things can happen and we can get into more of the nuance of those things on a, like a person by person basis. But I think the door that has to be open is the fact that we spend a ton of time just trying to artificially drop the blood pressure using chemistry, using medication. We spend a lot of time trying to artificially constrict blood vessels using medication, using chemistry, using compression. When a, a different way to think about that might be maybe in adjunct, maybe even alongside of those things, we think about, well, why are they not getting a signal in the first place? And what can I do to train my body to be more sensitive to that? And when I say train it, these reflexes are things that we have from the time we're babies, right? So the idea that we would just lose it and it goes away is a little more foreign. Instead, we want to think about how do we start to get somebody stronger or they get more sensitive to it again. So you think about somebody that um, uh, that is weight training. They're trying to make it so that their muscles are more responsive to a weight stimulus. How do you do that? Well, you increase a little bit of weight over time so that that load gets higher and higher. The challenge gets higher and higher. Now, the thing to consider, though, is that if when you stand up, your system is not responsive. What it means is that weight, that barbell is too heavy. Your body's not responding to that dose effectively. So we have to take some of the weight off the barbell. In other words, it means that we have to find the place where your system can be responsive and start where it can achieve the goal and then work back up from there. And that seems simplified, but and it kind of is, but what we want to what we want to aim toward is like can we get that receptor to send the right signal to the brain the brain can interpret it effectively and then it can do the right thing on the back end maybe that starts out just being something that you do at a very small challenge level you're not standing up you're not running around yet that's okay but if you can take that and you can turn it into a little bit more difficult and a little bit more difficult next thing you know we're sitting up. Next thing you know, we're able to start moving around. We're able to think more, use our brain without it wearing out, and then just keep scaling in that direction. So hopefully that helps to give a little bit of a metaphor. We're talking elevators and penthouses, and that's cool. But really, it's all the machinery that has to work in order for that to happen that I take for granted every day that most people are used to, to working. But if you're in this scenario, you may find that that may not be working as effectively as you want. And there may be an opportunity to be able to look into, hey, how are those systems working? Can I measure it? And can that give me an opportunity to have a positive outcome where I can actually get myself out of these symptoms, which is the beauty of the whole thing. That's why we're talking about it. That's why we spend the time. So if that's useful, let us know. If you got a better analogy, a better metaphor, let me know that. I would be happy to share it with people. But the main idea is that we want to start shifting this idea of tachycardia away from that being the devil of the problem and start to figure out if that is, if there's something more behind it. Is there something behind that that's hidden? Is it that we're starving the brain? It's a great place to start. So hope that helps. Have a great night.